Então.
Good evening, everyone. Hello, everyone. Having a little technical difficulty, but hopefully we're all good for tonight. <laughs> Second go around. Let's see.
Hello again, everyone. We will be beginning in three minutes. Okay, at six o'clock, I'd like to say good evening, everyone. Good evening to Dr. Evans, Superintendent of Schools, Melanie Hector, Assistant Principal of George L. Cook Elementary School, parents, teachers, staff, and of course, students. I am Kamika Lockhart, the new principal of George L. Cook, and I'm excited to be serving as your instructional leader this year. So this evening, I will be sharing with you our reopening plans and what it looks like for Cook Elementary. Let me share my screen. So before we get started, I'd like to give you some information on the census. The results of the census have a direct result on our federal funding that we received for 10 years. Undercounted means that we are under, underfunded. So if residents of Monticello do not complete the census, our school districts will be under, underfunded. So please respond today by going to the 2020census.gov and it takes only a few minutes to complete the information for your families. So we all want the best for our students in this time of the pandemic. For us at Monticello Central School District, health and safety leads our priorities. As you see that we are consistent with having a healthy, safe environment for the students, as well as the staff, and our quality of education is most important. So what does that look like at Cook? So we're asking that all students and staff wear face masks whenever they are on school district property, including riding the bus. Throughout, throughout the day, there will be a minimum of two mask breaks, which will be dependent on the teacher. The teachers can allow for more mask breaks as needed throughout the day, of course, with the appropriate six feet of social distancing. 
Students may also wear appropriate face coverings, coverings of their choice. However, they will be trained in order to wear those masks. And if students do not have masks, masks will be provided by the school. There will be various locations throughout the building for students to dispose of masks that may become spoiled throughout the day. So for social distancing and safety protocols, temperature screenings will be conducted upon the arrival. We are urging parents to please practice with the students of wearing masks throughout the day, starting now for at least 30 minutes a day so students can be familiar with wearing masks. In addition, upon arrival to the school, students will be temperature screened. In the event that the student's temperature is 100 degrees or higher, the student will be separated into a special room and the parents will be contacted to pick them up immediately. Students will then need, be needed to be evaluated by a medical provider in order to return to school. They must be accompanied with a note from a, a health care provider stating that COVID-19 was not detected. If COVID-19 is detected, the medical note would need to state that the individual is safe to return to school after the 14 days of quarantine period. Preventive measurements. There will be limited trafficking in the hallway and frequent hand washing where the students will be chairing, as well as sanitation stations throughout the building. There will be student-friendly signage in classrooms, the hallways, and other common areas where the students may go from the hallways until the entrance and exit. Students will also be required to wear a mask throughout the building and maintain social distancing. As I stated, training will occur for, parent, for uh, students to wear masks and hand washing and to engage in social distancing. But I'm asking that parents practice now to have students wearing their masks for at least 30 minute intervals throughout the day so they can get used to it when they do arrive to school. To increase ventilation, we will be opening windows as much as possible throughout the school. Hygiene and cleaning. So the district will promote frequent hand washing and the use of hand sanitizer, as I stated earlier. Students will be reminded and trained the importance of proper respiratory hygiene, like covering their mouth and the use of tissue when they sneeze. Frequent cleaning and disinfecting of high touch areas will be occurring throughout the day, such as light switches and doorknobs. Thorough cleaning and disinfecting of the classrooms will occur nightly and a deep cleaning of the building will occur each weekend and Wednesdays. Health hygiene. In addition, the district will provide training in hand and respiratory hygiene and the district will provide adequate supplies and time for frequent hand washing, meaning that students will constantly wash their hands throughout the day. So what does that look like for identifying students and staff with possible COVID-19 symptoms? The district will notify state and local health department immediately upon being informed of any positive COVID-19 diagnostic test results by an individual within school facilities or school grounds, including students, faculty, staff, and the visitors of the district. Visitors of the school will be asked to um, complete a survey of four questions that they would have to answer before entering. In those emergency situations, visitors will be allowed to enter in cases where they need to retrieve students that are um, having symptoms. So we're asking, as I stated before, that temperature screenings occur at home prior to the students getting on the bus or being dropped off. Please keep your children home if they have a fever of 100 degrees or higher. Remember, temperature checks should be, will be completed each day prior to the students entering the buildings. We will follow the CDC and DOH protocols for identifying students and staff members with possible COVID-19 symptoms. As I stated, students that have symptoms will be separated from the group and a parent will be called to pick them up immediately. We will use contact tracing to determine potential exposure and if needed, we will go and handle this in a timely manner for maybe possibly remote instruction for any class that has been exposed to positive um, COVID-19. Arrival and dismiss dismissal procedures. Arrival and dismiss dismissal will be staggered. Students will enter and dismiss from separate wings depending on grade levels. 
each wing, first grade has a wing, kindergarten has a wing, and second grade has a wing. They will enter and exit from those specific wings. They will have their temperatures checked before entering the school building. Also, students, as I stated, will be departing from the school using those exact wings that they entered upon. So cohort models, what does our cohort models look like? We have four various cohort models. Cohort A, which is in-person instruction, will occur on Mondays and Tuesdays, and they will receive remote learning on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Cohort B, remote learning on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and in-person instruction on Thursday and Friday. Cohort C is a special group, which is invitation only, and they will receive instruction for four days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, with, of course, remote learning on Wednesday. Cohort C will be comprised of kindergartners, English as a new language students, special education self-contained students, homeless students, and students without household internet. Cohort C, for those who choose, will be fully remote. So at Cook, we're doing a phase in opening. So the phase in opening looks as such for cohorts A and B. Cohort A, first graders and cohort A will attend school on Mondays and Tuesdays in person beginning Monday, September 21st. Students will engage in remote learning, as I stated previously, Wednesday through Friday. Second grade students in cohort A will attend school Monday and Tuesday in person beginning Tuesday, September 29th. Students will engage in remote learning Monday and Wednesday. Cohort B, which students in first grade, will attend school on Thursday and Friday in person beginning Thursday, September 24th. And students will engage in remote learning Monday through Wednesday. Second graders in cohort B will attend school on Thursday and Friday in person beginning Thursday, October 1st. And they will engage in remote learning on Monday through Wednesdays. Cohort C is our special invitation only group. Students in kindergarten self-contained classrooms, as I stated in EL, ENL, will be considered cohort C. They will begin school on September 4th. This schedule consists of four days per week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, with remote learning taking place on Wednesday. Cohort D, which will be full remote, will be devoted exclusively to remote learning for students. There will be a designated teacher to instruct classes remotely, and the schedule for re full remote cohort D will begin on September 14th. So what does that look like at a glance? I know that was a lot that I just stated. So now there's a visual to go with what I just communicated. So at the top, the location is school. On Mondays and Tuesdays, cohorts A and C will attend school. Wednesday, there will be remote instruction. Thursday and Friday, cohorts B and C. Home instruction on Mondays and Tuesday, cohorts B and D will be at home. Wednesday will be remote learning for all cohorts and cohorts A and D will attend school on Thursday and Friday. Transportation, the transportation procedures are consistent with both state issued public transportation guidance and the New York State Ed for reopening guidance. All students will enter the bus wearing a face mask and go directly to their assigned seats, loading from the rear to the front. When exiting, students will exit the front to the rear, engaging in social distance of six feet. All students of the same household will sit two to a seat. Students will be seated alternating windows from the aisle to each seat. Each seat will be marked with the S and children will be allowed, will be assigned to their seat by who gets on and gets off first. All buses will be sprayed and disinfected after each bus is empty, and this includes between runs. First and last periods of the day will serve as meeting and reflection time so students can receive their instruction and cohorts will be assigned according to the transportation zone. So as we are filling out the enrollment form, parents, I'm asking you that you include your updated addresses and make sure that they are accurate as well as phone numbers. Students will not be dropped off at alternate locations. Scheduling. So our scheduling as it follows, 60 minutes for math, 30 to 40 minutes for wind time, ELA, 90 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes for ELA one time, 40 minutes for science and social studies, which will be alternating days. Of course, the students will have their specialty classes such as library, 
music and art and PE will be outdoors, weather permitting where 12 feet of social distancing will occur. Students will also receive 40 minutes for lunch and recess. And they will also engage in the required hand washing hygiene or techniques. So what will the instruction look like for Cook? Cook will be engaged in station rotation and remote learning. To engage students in this learning process, we are using the station rotation model, which is the model that you see here. There's a computer-based instruction for a group of students that will have their own device. And we're asking that parents provide students with earbuds. There will be a teacher-led instruct instruction station where students will be engaged in social distance of course and a collaborative activity station where students will engage either in independent assignments or station work with social distancing measurements. Remote learning, this is the learning that takes place remotely. In this environment, it will consist of a schedule of assignments, intervention services, as well as spending time interacting directly with teachers and related services preside providers on a regular basis. In addition, there will be independent work that the students must turn in for attendance purposes and grading purposes in a timely manner to the teacher. At times, students will also receive pre-recorded video lessons, which they are to follow at home, which will require engagement and submission of assignments. During the remote learning, there will be various assignments and tasks for the students to complete electronically. So please parents stay on top of the students to make sure that the students are working remotely because that still is instruction that is occurring. Also, there will, students will receive instruction, as I stated, from the specialty teachers, related service providers, AIS teachers, and the social emotional wellness teacher. The students will be asked to log on at certain times of the day for teacher interaction, for example, the morning meeting, the reflection time, as I stated, as well as for conferencing or one-on-one -on -one check ins or group check ins. Mechanisms for attendance. So it is expected that all students in all cohorts attend school daily. Parents and guardians are, res are responsible for ensuring that the child attends school every day, whether in person or remote. In-person attendance will re be recorded in the traditional manner where the students that are physically present, tardy, or departing early will be recorded as such. For remote, Cook will employ multiple ways to track attendance for remote learning, whether that be students engaging in synchronous sessions, which are live sessions, submitting assignments online, logging on to online learning management systems such as Seesaw, attending virtual check-ins, and conferencing. A class schedule will be provided by the teachers for remote learning. In addition, we are working on getting the students a daily agenda of activities, as well as learning for the, our web-based platform of Seesaw. Food services. So school meals will continue for, to be available for all students, including those that are attending school in person and those that are learning remotely. For in-person meals, breakfast and lunch will occur in the classroom. Breakfast will be provided immediately upon arrival to school and we will have teacher aides assisting that, us in that process of transporting the lunch and breakfast to the classrooms. Each classroom will have, a trash, will have a trash can for disposal. All food articles will be placed in the proper disposal area and placed outside of the door. Remote meals, the district will continue to deliver off-site students with meals following its current successful meal transportation distribution system. Um, Don Parsons is on the call. If you would have would like to say anything, if anybody has any questions, just give me a uh, call at the office. The number is on the district website, or you can shoot me an email. I know everybody's busy these days, so whichever form of communication is easiest. And we can put that information in the chat as well. Behavior, excuse me, behavior expectations. Students are expected to follow the code of conduct when in-person and remote learning. Students must allow for completion of their temperature to be taken prior to entering the building or the student will not be allowed to attend in-person instruction. In the event that a student refuses to wear their face mask appropriately 
or follow social distance protocol, you will speak to myself or Melanie and the parents will be informed of this. The students will also be counseled for the proper way to aware and um, that they are expected to wear masks and engage in social distancing. Informed choices by parents. Now, you all should have received information about going on to the Monticello Central site to fill out the enrollment form that was available in live on August 7th. And I'm going to provide more information in the following screen about that. The enrollment forms are due to us by August 15th. If you lack internet access or need help filling out those forms, you can call the school. We will submit the form for you electronically online so you can be counted for. And please make sure when submitting or providing this information that the phone numbers and addresses are accurate because as we stated, we will use that information for transportation um, purposes. There will be more information forthcoming at a later date for before and after school care, as well as clubs and after school activities. If you would like any additional information, all the information can be found on MonticelloSchools.net, as well as we're asking that parents download the app for School Messenger. This is a way that you will have constant communication with the district and schools about anything that is taking place with specific schools or the district. So we're asking that all families download the School Messenger app, and this can be found with this website. Also, if you would like further information about the station rotation model that we will be using, you can log on to www.blendedlearning.org and you will see the station rotation model. At this time, that completes my presentation. But if you need to contact us with any questions, we are available via phone or via email. And myself and Melody's email are present on the screen and we will add them to the chat for you. Thank you for joining us for the parent informational meeting and we look forward to working with you and your family in the near future and happy school year. Um, Courtney, if there are any questions. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I've gotten quite a few questions coming through. Um, we, I've separated them into three categories so we can try to keep the conversation on track. If you would like to submit a question that hasn't already been asked, you can do so by going to the chat icon at the bottom of your screen and submitting it. Um, our assistant principal, Melanie Hector, is also uh, helping out in the, the Zoom chat, so you might want to check there. She's answered a couple of questions there, so uh, you might keep an eye on that to see if she has answered yours. So I'm going, to talk, I'm going to ask uh, questions about health and safety first. Uh, number one, can you speak a little bit to the mask regulation? Um, some folks are asking why students will need to wear masks if we're trying to keep them six feet apart. Because according to the state ed guidelines, as well as Department of Health, masks are required within school buildings and buses. If a student does not have a mask, a mask will be offered to the students. We do have masks available for every student and as well as every staff member. And can you speak a little bit about what the mask breaks are going to look like? So we are instilling a minimum of two mask breaks per day. However, as the teacher sees fit, the teacher will instill a mask break for the class. If the class becomes anxious and needs a break, needs to take a breather, as long as social distancing is being instituted, the students will be able to remove their mask and engage in some talking activity, as long as it is separated, as well as maybe a viewing of a calm down a video to help the students calm down as they're wearing the mask. But students are to remain seated without the mask on, and those breaks will occur at scheduled times that the teacher sees fit. Okay, and just to clarify, if a student comes without a mask, will we provide one to them? Absolutely, yes, definitely. We'll give it to them right outside before they even enter. <laughs> before they it's stopping at the car, we'll give them the mask. Stopping at the bus, give them the mask. Yes, definitely. If we I will. They, we will like for them. The bus will have masks available for the students as well. 
Yeah, they won't. Okay, and I think I heard Dr. Evans speaking. Oh. Dr. Evans? Yes, I'm sorry, Ms. Lockhart. That's correct. They won't be able to get on the bus without a mask. Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, you spoke a little bit about the process for sending students home if they have any symptoms. Um, if a student, will a documentation of a negative COVID-19 test be required every time a student has a temperature? Well, we do know that temperatures can be for various reasons. We're asking if the student is, has symptoms of COVID-19 that last for several days. We're asking that the student return with a medical clearance. Okay, great. The next set of questions I have, um, actually, I'm going to move on to the technology questions. Um, if, if, will we be provide, can you speak a little bit about um, devices for students? Will we be providing a device to each student in the school? Yes, each student will have a, an individual iPad. And with that iPad, they will receive a bag as long with, along with a charger and a checklist. The checklist will give reminders of students of what they should do at night, meaning that they should charge their iPads to have, be able to use them the next day. It will also have what they should do with the devices in school. So every student will receive a bag and a checklist and a charger. We're asking parents to provide the students with earbuds. Okay, and now moving on to some uh, questions about academics. Um, can you explain what, why, uh, what the thought process was behind having the, the kindergarten children come in four days per week? According to the New York guidance, the priority is given for cohort C of students of ENL population, special, uh, special ed self-contained and kindergarten students. Our early learners need um, to be present in school, so the guidance states that they should be present. Those cohorts, those students will be considered cohort C and will be present for four days. And while we're on the subject of kindergartners, um, are kindergartners able to enroll in the remote learning option? And if so, can you speak a little bit to what their day will look like? Will it be more than 10 to 20 minute intervals of instruction? Kindergarten will be enrolling in cohort C, which is four days. Okay, if a child has an IEP and receives services, will they be um, automatically placed into group C? or cohorts? If they're in the self-contained population, yes, they will be in cohort C. And then we had a couple of questions about the staggered, um, staggered start times. Can you just clarify again um, when students will be, when cohorts will be um, beginning their school year? Okay. So cohort C will begin September 14th, and they will begin on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Cohort B, which is first and second grade, I'm sorry, cohort A, which is first and second grade. First grade will begin on Monday, September 21st. Second grade cohort A will begin on Tuesday, September 29th, because there's no school on that Monday, uh, the 28th. Cohort B, first grade, will begin school on Thursday. Cohort B will attend school on Thursdays and Fridays and begin on September 24th. Students in cohort B will attend school Thursdays and Fridays and begin on October 1st. Those are second graders. Okay, just give me one moment. Okay, so parents who work during the day, uh, will a student be able to do work in the evening if they are in re uh, the remote learning cohort D? Yes. Okay. Um, if a child has a temperature or is unable to attend in person for any reason on their scheduled day, will they be able to participate in remote learning on that particular day? Yes. And uh, why did we make the decision to, to split the students up into two cohorts so that they're only attending two days per week? And when will this decision be revisited? Dr. Evans, would you like to jump in <laughs> there? So we had to be careful about uh, 
cohorts because if there is a, a, a student who is symptomatic uh, or a student who we receive word from the Department of Health tested positive for COVID, we'll be required to do contact tracing. That means every individual who that student had uh, 15 minutes or more of contact with within six feet of, of another individual. That means we have to inform those families, we have to inform staff, we have to inform public health about all of those individuals who were within that small circle. And that can be any time within a 48 hour window. So the reason why we opted for this cohort over two days, and then a break, and then a new cohort coming in over the next two days is to try to minimize uh, not only uh, those interactions and experiences, but also we need to have enough space to ensure social distancing. So many of our classrooms now, because of the requirement to have six feet within, uh, you know, between two individuals, and that includes staff members with students or students with each other, uh, we had to minimize the number of uh, available space for in-person instruction. So therefore we could not have um, five days a week of in-person instruction as an option. Uh, we think, but we're not sure yet, uh, that we can have this hybrid model with some students coming in four days a week. And as Ms. Lockhart mentioned before, Wednesdays will be closed uh, to students and staff for deep cleaning and disinfection. We'll be doing that anyway throughout the week. But it also uh, gives time for the, the virus, if it is around, uh, to, uh, to die out if it's on a surface. Uh, so uh, those are the reasons why we're looking at a two day a week and then three days out as a hybrid model. Now, uh, some of you asked about the staggered schedule. Uh, that's to ensure that we don't overload our systems on day one. Uh, we have never conducted a, uh, a socially distanced bus run and then a drop off at school where we're doing the questionnaire and then the temperature taking of students as well as staff as they enter the building. So it's important for us that uh, we have opportunities to make sure that all of those, uh, uh, those practices get ironed out as we build. And we also don't know yet uh, what, you know, if, if students do come back and, or staff come back and uh, have symptoms, then we have to put into effect our contact tracing as well as our isolation. So if a student gets off the bus and has a temperature of 100 degrees, he or she is going to be placed in an isolation room as well as the other students on that bus because they would have come in contact with that student. Um, and then we'll go from there in terms of contact tracing. So we're not, a, we're not familiar with that process yet, but we're developing it. And then we want to uh, gradually phase that in as we can. Another question that I see popping up in the chat is uh, what are parents' options? I'm speaking generally. So parents on their enrollment form will have the option to select remote learning only five days a week or a hybrid model. And then for parents of particular populations, if they select the hybrid model, uh, then uh, the uh, school administration you know, will identify them and uh, offer them the uh, cohort C option, which is four days a week. So some of you are parents of kindergarten students. You have the option of having your kindergarten students stay home for five days a week of remote learning. But what we're telling you is that uh, kindergarten students will be given the priority to possibly, if the numbers allow it, and we can do it physically, uh, be able to uh, have four days a week of cohort C, uh, which is four days a week of in-person instruction and then the one day of remote learning. So I hope I've clarified that. Um, but I just want you know, to reiterate the slide that uh, Ms. Lockhart had early on in her presentation, which is we are prioritizing the health and safety of our students and staff first. And then within that, providing the best quality uh, opportunities for learning and instruction as we can while uh, keeping in mind the health and safety of all of our students and staff and community members. It is not an easy thing to do. And I give a lot of credit to our uh, staff members and our committee members who have come in and volunteered their time uh, to try to iron these out. Um, but we're going about it uh, as responsibly as we can within the guidelines that are set forth by the New York State Department of Health and the New York State Education Department. I have shared on there uh, on the chat uh, feature the uh, 
links to these New York State Education Department uh, guidelines. One can also go to our website to find those as well as the Department of Health guidelines. So uh, I'm going to kick this back to Ms. Lockhart, but I'll stay on the line. Uh, okay, I hope I answered your question. Okay, will students who are attending the hybrid model of learning, will they have the opportunity to uh, switch out of hybrid and into the universal remote throughout the semester if they find that it's, um, if, they, if they want to? Yes. Okay, um, how, how are the um, emergency days such as a snow day, how is that going to be handled? So I do not have the answer for that yet. <laughs> <laughs> we will mark that and um, ensure that when we do have the answer, it will be posted uh, as a Q&A on our frequently asked questions, which is accessible from our main um, plan page on the website. Um, so, so if a student has siblings uh, in the middle and the high school, will they be in the same cohort? Yes, that is how we are planning for students, uh, siblings to be in the same cohort. Okay. Um, do you know uh, when parents can expect to hear which cohort their child is in, whether that's cohort A, B, or C, whether they get the invitation? Yes. As I stated, um, enrollment forms are due August uh, 15th. We will be disaggregating that information and then making up uh, the invites to the parents and reaching out to the parents with that information as soon as we receive it after August 15th. So make sure you get your enrollment forms in with the updated information as well as address and phone number so we can contact you to inform you of what cohort your child will be in. Okay, um, I'm just gonna remind everybody, I'm seeing some questions come in that have already been addressed. Um, and also please check through the chat to see if uh, Ms. Hector has answered your question. This is being recorded and we will have it posted. So if you came in late and you might've missed the part of the conversation where your question was answered, you'll have the opportunity to revisit this video and find the answer. Um, for right now, I just have one remaining question and it goes back to the health and safety. Um, will cleaning be done on Saturdays as it is on Wednesdays? Yes, there will be a deep cleaning on Wednesdays as well as the weekends. Absolutely. Um, when do we expect, or when do we expect uh, that students will receive a supply list? The supply list will be um, given out along with the indication of your um, cohort. As uh, well as iPads. So iPads will be given out prior to September 14th. Um, when we have those available, we will send out a message for um, various grade levels. We're going to do it staggered for them to pick up iPads. So you receive the supply list along with that information. Okay. Um, are students able to be picked up anywhere other than their primary residence from our transportation department? So can they be picked up from the transportation department um, or from our buses uh, at a daycare or a caregiver's house? At this time, we're using the address that is listed on the enrollment form. I, I, yes, so I, I believe the answer to that is yes. However, um, one of us will get back to you, either Ms. Lockhart or I will get back to you with, with more detailed information. But it, you know, I, I think Ms. Lockhart raises a good point, which is, um, it depends on what's on the form. So that would fall back on uh, what I would imagine are the, the standard procedures, which is the parent provides a, uh, a, a written note that specifies that in advance. So uh, Ms. Lockhart, could you make a note of yes. verifying that? Thanks. Uh, will we have chaperones on the bus? We are looking into that for um, chaperones aides to be on the bus. So that will be something that it will be forthcoming. Okay. How will the nurses address, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. How will the nurses address students with special needs uh, such as medications, episodes, etc.? The current way that it is already being done, we will have other uh, staff that will assist uh, with students that are symptomatic, but the nurse will conduct uh, medication as it already is being handled. So that will not stop, that will not be interrupted. Okay. 
Um, I do not see any questions coming through that have not already been addressed. As I'd like to remind everybody, we will have, um, we will have this video posted shortly afterwards. Um, I do have one more question that has not been addressed yet. Uh, can you speak a little bit to the after school program? Will we have an after school or a before school program? At this time, we will not for the month of September. That information is being revisited and we will provide you with that once we have it. But for September, that is not will may not occur me. Will not and, be, I should say. <laughs> Um, just going back to the question about switching um, switching cohorts, if, if it's not a good fit, we, we talked about switching uh, to remote from hybrid. Is it possible to make a switch in the opposite direction from hybrid to remote? Yes. Okay. So those, those are all the questions that I am seeing that have not already been addressed. Um, I would like to give Dr. Evans the opportunity to have a final word if he so chooses. Uh, Dr. Evans? Thank you, Ms. Bonfante, but I will turn this back over to Ms. Lockhart for the final, final yes. words. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I just want to impress upon our attendees that I think we all want to uh, have schools reopen for in-person instruction in as much as possible, in, a, in as safe a manner as possible. But that really is dependent upon how all of us respond to what we're asking of each other. And that is to uh, you know, maintain social distancing, wear facial coverings, to uh, check on one's, you know, either your, your child's or your staff member, your own temperature and your symptoms every day. And if you have a temperature that's 100 or more, uh, regardless of what you think it might be, if it's 100 or more, stay home. If you have a, a persistent cough or runny nose or sore throat or upset stomach that is, you know, beyond just some sneezing in the morning or beyond just, you know, you shouldn't have eaten that last night, stay home. Um, we will be providing remote learning opportunities uh, for students who are uh, sick that way. And the reason I say that is because as school districts, we will not be able to get back to you know, reopening at a, on a wider scale if we have periodic uh, episodes of uh, students or staff members who get sick with COVID. For as long as that continues, uh, we may have periodic shutdowns where we go to remote learning. And further, it will just kind of push back that date of a, a more fuller uh, reopening for in-person instruction. So I really want to impress upon that point that, you know, we're all in this together and that if we take responsible steps, and it, it is work, and it's sometimes inconvenient, I get it, um, but we can get to a better place as a, uh, as a school and as a school district and a community. So I want to thank everyone for turning out tonight. And as uh, Ms. Bonfante said, you know, if, if we haven't gotten to your information yet, um, it's either in this recording somewhere else, or you can certainly email me or Ms. Lockhart or uh, any one of us, uh, Ms. Hector as well. And thank you, Ms. Hector, for moderating as well. I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Lockhart. Uh, Ms. Lockhart. Yes, I want to thank everyone for joining tonight. Hopefully, we've answered your questions. However, if you still have outstanding questions that you would like further clarification on, I can be reached at clockhart at k 12 m mcsd.net as well as contacting the school and I will be available to speak with you via phone. Um, hopefully I will be able to meet each of you in person very soon and I look forward to working with you and your families. Thank you. Have a good night everyone. <laughs>